They don't teach you the truth. It has a point. In in fact, in fact, you can read poetry and found it all over the place that the say never ever 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 was a perfect person about that. But you're not talking to an idiot, so you're not really making the right thing. of stored data first, ask for a warrant later, is simply unacceptable. Right, and those politicians in support of these surveillance programs don't understand the concept of due process or probable cause, and are in violation of their oath to protect and uphold the Constitution. Right. Right. Many people seem to have forgotten their history and don't recognize the clear unconstitutionality of PRISM, the NSA surveillance state, and secret interpretation of laws. If we take a look back on history, see what garnered support for these ideas originally, we can better understand what the founders feared. The Excise Act of 1754 gave tax collectors unlimited powers to interrogate colonists concerning their use of goods subject to customs and, and permitted the use of a general warrant, sound familiar? Known as a writ of assistance, allowing them to search the homes of colonists and seize prohibited and uncustomed goods. In 1761, James Otis, a representative of merchants took the matter to court denouncing the use of general warrants. John Adams, who was present in the courtroom, viewed this event as the spark which originated the American Revolution. The founders of this country understood the danger of general warrants and the danger they posed to individual liberty and the importance of requiring specific evidence to seize, or search or seize a person's property. 
The Virginia Declaration of Rights states, rightly so, that general warrants are both grievous and oppressive to the American people. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. absolutely. Right, right, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Some Americans have not forgotten the purpose of the Fourth Amendment. Together, we're showing the nation and the world that Americans will stand up for what they believe is right, that we will once again fight for freedom, for human rights, and for justice, that people of widely different ideologies can come together to stand for what they believe in, that no matter how much the powers that be try to divide us, we, the people, will never back down from speaking the truth and fighting for what is right. <laughs> Together we can restore this nation to what it was originally intended to be, a beacon of freedom and respect for the rights of the individual. Woo! Together we can take back this country and restore the fourth. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to end with a quote, and don't laugh because it's from Captain America. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the press says. It doesn't matter what the politicians or the mobs say. It doesn't matter if the whole country decides that something wrong is something right. This nation was founded on one principle above all else, the requirement that we stand up for what we believe, no matter the odds or the consequences. When the mob and the press and the whole world tell you to move, your job is to plant yourself like a tree beside the river of truth and tell the whole world, no, you move. That's right. Yeah. Conduct a congressional hearing and a criminal investigation into the extent and constitutionality of domestic surveillance programs. Do it now. Right now. Right. And act reform to the USA Patriot Act and Section 215, the State Secrets Privilege, and the FISA's Amendment Act to make clear that blanket surveillance of the internet activity and phone records of any person residing in the U.S. is prohibited by law and that violations can be reviewed in adversarial proceedings before a public court. Yeah! 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 Number three, hold those involved in government surveillance programs accountable through stringent and transparent judicial oversight. Yeah! Yeah! Four, create an independent and transparent supervisory body to ensure that government surveillance activities are constitutional. Yeah. Number five, remove the liar James Clapper from the Director of National Intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Incarceration! Yes. We have a petition going around that will be back at the Washington Square Park that you can sign that states these goals. And we're going to send them to our federal representatives. Make sure you sign that. We need to let them know how we feel. We need to let them know that this is not okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, a lot of you are here because of a man named Edward Snowden. Now, we have to be careful not to get distracted and make the story about him. We have to remind the media that the story is about our privacy. It's about our rights. Snowden is a messenger, shining light on the dark secrets of the national security state, a catalyst driving us to action, a nucleus urging all of us to combat intrusive practices that stifle dissent, and we need to protect whistleblowers. Yeah. Bring yeah. the yeah. to the American Now, now, a lot of people will say, well, it's fine if we collect metadata if it presents terrorism. No! no. 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 All right. We're not a terrorist. Yeah. That's right. We're not terrorists. <laughs> no, we're not. Okay, we're, we're, we're fine with surveillance that's specific and limited as outlined by the Fourth Amendment. Yes. yes. Right. But we will not allow fear to consume us. No. Right. No. Privacy yeah. protection, due process, and the rule of law keep our society safe and free. Yeah. Yeah. We will not be scared into giving up our constitutional right. Now, don't fool yourself into thinking we can just put new people in office. Let's not hope that the next person will do better. Accountability starts with you. We need to hold their feet to the fire. We the people of Restored Forth don't want empty promises. We want results. We need to take these unconstitutional powers away from the government so no one can abuse them. Yeah. 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 Right. We need to pass laws in Congress 
We need to get active against Fourth Amendment infringement at the state and local level too. Yeah. Yeah. Nullify federal laws and rein in abuses of state and local police forces. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So are we going to let the gov federal government destroy the Fourth Amendment? No! Are we going to let New York State violate our privacy? No! Are we okay with local collaborators infringing on our liberty? No! So what are we going to do? Save America! Save America! We're going to restore the fort! that we, everyone here together, join together in the future if for no other reason to ensure that we maintain our ability to assent and criticize our government when our leaders have gone astray. It's essential for preserving not just privacy, but all of our rights. Yes, right. Second Amendment, free speech, due process, and more. I hope this is the start of many great par partnerships to come. Together, we can save the Republic. Yes. We can save the Republic. Thank you. Uh, she's, uh, she was born in Batavia, but moved to Rochester at a young age, served 18 years as an environmental services operator for the city of Rochester, and then went back to school for teaching. She has her master's degree in education from Nazareth, and currently she is running for a school board under the Green Party line. Everyone give Lori a hand. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 I'm a teacher. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and happy 4th of July. Good morning. Good morning. We come together each year to celebrate independence from the control of the British. What we don't realize is we have sold our freedom to the wealthy, and we are no longer independent, but enslaved to a dehumanizing, classist system of intimidation and subservience. Long time. Right. On three separate occasions, the Rochester police entered my home without and twice illegally searched my home. On May 1st, 2013, Mr. Benny War was illegally searched, then beaten and arrested by Rochester police while waiting for a bus in his motorized wheelchair. You assemble here today to bring back the fourth in opposition to the Patriot Act when unpatriotic acts are taking place right here in Rochester and go unnoticed and unanswered. We live in a city where the police must take an oath to protect and serve the public and maintain an attitude of integrity. And yet we allow them to dishonor their oath by intimidating and insulting the citizens of Rochester without accountability. How much investigation must be done when a video recording and multiple witnesses are a testament to the injustices done to Mr. War? If this attitude of arrogance is ignored by the citizens, then it will be supported by corrupt leadership that refuses to bring the violators to justice. That's where we're at here. If the apple that's is bad, now, it's not coming. That's right now. That's right. And if an apple is bad, do we leave it in the barrel to spoil the whole lot? No. no. If our leaders had integrity, they would want to expel the bad apples from their ranks so that the public they are sworn to protect us and serve us can be confident in their safety and respecting of their protectors. Yes. At this point, the mayor, the police chief, the officers involved, but most importantly, the citizens of Rochester must all be called to question for the incompetent handling of this situation. Yes. 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 When we do not come together to love one another, we remain separated by hate. When we allow human rights. Yeah. Yeah. We must stand together against the hate, loving each other because each other is what we have. Yeah. Yeah. Loving this earth because it's all we have. Yeah. Yes, we have a constitution, but we also have a spirit, an energy, a spirit that unites everything on this planet, and our spirit, our connectedness, okay, supersedes the constitution. Yeah. Yeah. Fight, but fight for humanity, yes. not for a piece of paper that gives us the right to be human.
It acknowledges your right. It doesn't give a shit. <laughs> you were born with we that right. We have that right to be human. Right. We shouldn't be fighting for that. We should be sure. fighting for the right for humanity. Okay? Understand that we are one. We can only evolve as one. They want us to revolve in revolution. We need to evolve as one people. To paraphrase a powerful statement that came out of World War II, the only thing the corporate machine needs to thrive is for American citizens to do nothing. But once we realize and understand that our collective voice is more powerful than the money that they've collected, we can start demanding integrity in politics and in our political leaders. We must come together with one voice and demand excellence from our leaders or elect leaders that have shown excellence. We must demand with one voice that our political leaders stop acting patriotic and become the voice of the American people that they were elected to be. We must demand with one voice the removal of corporate dollars from government offices. And we must, must, must demand with one voice the excellent education of our children. And when we demand with one voice, we command with one voice. And when that and that is when America becomes the nation that it was supposed to be. Woo! My name is Lori Thomas and I'm running for school board commissioner. Vote three, row F, one voice, one world. I practiced this, I did. One voice, one world, one love. Thank you. This is Doug Noble, <laughs> uh, long, an author and long-term activist affiliated with Rochester Against War, Metro Justice, Woo! Rebels and Upstate Coalition to ground the drones. He's interested in the Fourth Amendment because uh, uncontrolled search and seizure, as in uh, Nazi Germany, undermines the population, crushing the spirit and putting terror in every heart. It must be stopped. Police 
in this country. Moral security guards routinely, routinely engage in profiling or other constitutionally suspect behavior when searching or detaining suspect shoppers. Since these are not government agents, the Fourth Amendment does not apply. Police stop and frisk. Stop and frisk has been an exception to the Fourth Amendment since the 1968 Terry v. Ohio case when the Supreme Court drew dubious distinctions between a stop and an arrest and between a frisk and a search. A stop is clearly a seizure of a person, yet one that is deemed justified if the police detect what they consider suspicious behavior. And people, of course, in high crime and minority populations and paved neighborhoods are stopped and frisked far more disproportionately. Once again, the Fourth Amendment does not apply. Even more chillingly, immigration and customs officers in ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement teams, conducting immigration raids are routinely violating the Fourth Amendment. Seven member teams of ICE agents across the country regularly make house calls, usually in pre-dawn hours, in SWAT light raids, with shotguns, automatic rifles, sometimes crawling through open windows. In place of search warrants by a judge, which the Fourth Amendment would require, ICE agents carry administrative warrants issued by one of their own. The raids are supposed to be aimed at fugitive illegal immigrants who have committed criminal acts, but they're regularly used to rope up non-criminal, undocumented criminal workers. One study that examined 700 arrests between 2006 and 2008 in Long Island, New Jersey, found two-thirds of the arrests were circumstantial, happenstance. They were mostly of Latinos whose only crime was a civil one of working here illegally. Many ICE agents also have to meet quotas. Here in upstate New York, raids by ICE teams take place regularly at our bus stations, our train stations, and even at churches on Sunday morning. On any given day, there are 33,000 people detained by ICE, all in violation of the Fourth Amendment. They spend an average of 26.5 days behind bars, and many of those bids are run by private security organizations like corporations like Corpor Corrections Corporation of America. The frantic families of those picked up frequently have no idea where their disappeared loved ones is being detained, often hundred miles away at places like Batavia Detention Center, and it's a big rally there on July 30th. I'll you know, send something out. <laughs> Uh, a report from Detention Watch Network found detainees held on immigration charges frequently get thrown into isolation for weeks, etc., etc., etc. All this constitutes yet another egregious devastation. Were those people that were being detained American citizens? Of our fourth American right, amended right. Including. National Defense Authorization Act. With chilling consequences for all Americans, Obama's recently renewed NDAA now authorizes detainment of persons captured within the United States of America without charge or trial. That's not authorized by law in this country. The federal government can imprison any person who is part of or substantially supported Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, or associate forces that are engaged in hostilities against the United States and coalition partners. The NDAA also authorizes the use of military tribunals for personal persons captured within the U.S. In the military tribunals, as was the case with the medieval Inquisition, the prosecution can introduce into evidence confessions obtained through torture and also secret evidence unavailable to the accused. In these proceedings, virtually every basic right is ignored. Among other rights, the proceedings violate the Fourth Amendment right to exclude evidence obtained through torture or other unlawful means. The warrantless detention and year-long solitary confinement of Bradley Manning and his military commission trial now taking place in Fort Meade in Maryland offer a sobering depiction of what may lie in store for the likes of Edward Snowden and the rest of us under the NDAA. I'm just about done. It goes without saying that a warrant was never issued by a neutral magistrate for the arrest of the Guantanamo date detainees. Recent WikiLeaks documents have demonstrated how random the roundup of innocent Guantanamo detainees really was, often involving bounty payoffs and false accusations. 
These actions are due to judicial seizures themselves as well as the regular use of evidence of pain through torture are a flagrant violation of the Fourth Amendment. Finally, as an anti-drone activist, I must also mention that the extrajudicial warrantless assassination of American citizens by weaponized drones is perhaps the most profound violation of their Fourth Amendment right to be secure in their person. To conclude, this litany of wholesale evisceration of the Fourth Amendment should worry everyone. Justice Robert H. Jackson, former Chief United States Prosecutor at the Nuremberg Trials, wrote in 1941, Uncontrolled search and seizure is one of the first and most effective weapons in the arsenal of every arbitrary government. Among deprivations of rights, none is so effective in cowing the population, crushing the spirit of the individual, and putting terror in every heart. Restore the force. I want to say I was planning on speaking about something a little bit different until I got here and I saw the different groups of people that were here and the different messages that are being spread around and and I, I just want to point something out I'm going to be extremely short uh, uh, we disagree on a lot of things uh, as I'm reading the messages and I'm seeing t-shirts here and and there's a lot of things and some stuff that have been said that I just do not agree with but I am here for the same reason that you are, is to make sure the government is not in our business when it shouldn't be. And if we're gonna, if we do not stick together and we keep throwing around labels and labeling each other and calling each other names, we will never get anything done. That's right. So whether in November you go and you vote for Green Rochester or you go and you vote at all. If, if we continue to let ourselves be separated, we will get nothing done. I appreciate the fact that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. I appreciate you asking me to speak. And I look forward to working with you on this issue as time goes on, because this is not a one-day thing. We're not going to get anything done unless we keep going for a long, long time. That's right. Woo! So when it comes to restoring the Fourth Amendment, let's keep the struggle going. Thank you. Woo! Caves. Grew up in Canandaigua. Studied political science in SUNY Geneseo, where he has was a rogue president of the College Republicans and leader of the nonpartisan Sons of Liberty. He's interested in the issue because what America has become over these last decades is a violation of revolutionary ideas that founded this country. Please welcome Dan. For being here. Yes. My name is Dan, and I am one of you today. Now, I have a question. Who here has a smartphone? Take them out. Take them out real quick. What you have at your fingertips is a most dangerous technology. With that innovation, you can mass produce potentially destabilizing ideas for an ever growing audience. It can even risk creating extremists if you're not careful. More generally, it could lead to the leaking of secrets that the average citizen may have been happier not knowing. <laughs> The argument goes that there needs to be a filter. Established authorities should regulate what flows out of this new technology, which is unlike anything we've ever seen before. And the very least, we need to keep tabs on who is using it and how for our own good and safety. Now, those are some standard talking points from over the last few decades as to why digital information is fair game. 
as we watched helplessly as the Fourth Amendment has been argued away without our consent. However, if you turn the clocks back 500 years, trading in today's police and presidents for medieval kings and clergy, you would, have a, you would hear haunting echoes of all of that about the printing press. Although the technology established what was existed elsewhere in the world, the sudden ability to be able to print and reprint ideas for an increasingly literate public did wonders to democratize information in a society that sorely needed it. That era's ruling classes scrambled to lessen the blow to their ill-gotten authority, but even when owning a printed Bible in a language you could understand meant death, they could not trip up the first steps on the march to modern democracy. It was, power, it was power that the people dictated for themselves, rather than waiting for their rulers to kindly hand it over, that led to the democratization of faith in the Protestant Reformation, and then of art and culture during the Renaissance. Soon thereafter dawned the Age of Enlightenment, when dangerous ideas of democracy, republics, liberty, when political power became a public good, rather than the private property of a few, led to the beginning of the greatest experiment in modern history, founded in spirit in Philadelphia on this day in 1776. Yeah. Right. Fast forward 237 years, and we're faced with another technological upheaval. Although the Fourth Amendment to our Constitution still nominally protects our homes, letters, and landlines, but whatever that's worth these days, Digital communication over cell phones and the internet has become a new legal gray area for today's rulers to exploit. It is now an envelope to be pushed until they hit real resistance. Today, we offer that resistance. We cannot let them dictate to us how we will engage in private communication. The NSA seeks not only to track us, but also to establish a new normal and to dampen any debate. We hear many of our fellow citizens who think it is no big deal, but they, take, they make the mistake of taking the word of a few over the cries of the many. Will we let them define our future on their terms? No! no. Or will we be brave like the ink-stained soldiers of liberty who chipped away at the authority of the crown by refusing to comply? Yes! yes. yes. They say they got nothing to hide. I say I got nothing to prove. There you go. Starting today, we must become single-issue voters. This is not to minimize any other important issues that concern Americans, but if you ask me, the quiet death of our Fourth Amendment and the ongoing erosion of our Constitution threatens any progress made on those others. We must stay strong and fight for our privacy until real progress is made. Our lives are safe for now, although, if you were to ask the government, that is negotiable. But. We must be aware of the ways the powerful manipulate us, the way they change the subject, hoping to keep us bickering among ourselves while they get away with their sins unchallenged. For me, this is a dream come true. I see the Tea Party and the Green Party, liberals, conservatives, libertarians, socialists, wow, feedback, <laughs> citizens of all types, standing shoulder to shoulder for what we have in common. Our respective ideologies may clash, but over, yeah, our, our respective ideologies may clash over their details, but those of us here and all across the country gathering to restore the fourth understand what it really means to be an American. Woo! Because before we decide as a people what to do with our government, we must settle once and for all what the government can do with its people. Thank you. Got another speaker coming up right now. His name is Alex White. He grew up in Rochester for earning a BA at St. John Fisher. And that made at SUNY Brockport and also a PhD at SUNY Binghamton. After teaching, Alex founded his own business, Baldo's Armory, in 1996. He's a director of the Good Business Association of Rochester and is very active at city council meetings. Everybody give Alex a hand. Come on up. Hi everybody, in case you don't know, what I do is I'm interested in local city politics. Now, you see this issue 
is being about your emails. You see it about the national government taking advantage and avoiding the Fourth Amendment. But what you don't notice is that locally, the Fourth Amendment has been under attack for more than a decade, and the rights of many Rochesterians have been violated over and over and over again. Rochester has passed a series of laws, many of which have been found unconstitutional, in which they have tried to have some city official sign a search warrant, called an administrative search warrant, to search the houses, to search apartments, to search cars of people in Rochester. The curfew that they passed in Rochester included a clause that allowed the police to search any kid they picked up for curfew violations. The city passed a noise ordinance on vehicles that if the radio of your vehicle was too loud, they could impound the car. They did this because impounding the car means they get to search it. Fortunately, the, the court system saw through that and struck that one down. But there are a number of these still on the books. And as we talk now, from the time we started marching to now, several people have been stopped, have been grabbed, have been cuffed, have been searched with no probable cause in Rochester under a policy that resembles stop and frisk. We have been doing this for years. The cause that we fight is being in a poor neighborhood, being black, being male. I spoke to a graduate student at the U of R who came from the Caribbean to study medicine at the medical school there. He was told, having never been to Rochester, that the 19th Ward was the black section of town. He was black, he figured he'd get an apartment on Brooks Avenue. He was stopped in his first semester more than a dozen times while walking home by the police who wanted to search his backpack and search his laptop because he was a black man walking and they did it with no probable cause. The Fourth Amendment is under attack daily. Rochester has on its books a law of requiring that if you want to rent property, you get a C of O. That's a certificate of occupancy. In order to get that, you have to submit to a search in which they're looking for anything possible wrong. This is what's going on. If we don't, if we, if we need to care about this issue nationally. But we also need to care about these issues locally. Because locally, once we lose our right to protection from search and seizure, it's only a very short step to nationally they do the same thing. And locally, this is happening whether you live in Rochester, Monroe County, or Wayne County, the sheriff's departments are also starting to try to find other extraordinary ways to search you, your vehicle, and your house. We can't let this happen. We have to pay attention to local politics, and that's why it's so important, and that's why everyone needs to be vigilant. Because if we aren't, they will just take your rights away. And as running for mayor, that's something I don't want to see happen. Woo! Thank you. Enjoy the fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Let's stand up for the Constitution of the United States of America. Right. When I yell, restore the fourth, fist pump, you have, what do you yell, freedom? Restore the fourth! Freedom! Restore the fourth! Freedom! Restore the fourth! Freedom! freedom. Got another speaker coming up, his name is Jim Swartz, an adjunct professor of United States history at SUNY Geneseo, served on a National Steering Committee of Historians Against the War. He is also a member of ROP and the chair Chair of the Peace Committee of PIA. The, PAC, the peace activists nationwide have been targeted for seizure of their property and persons under both the Bush and Obama administrations. Motivates him to take action. Welcome, Jim Schwartz. Come out, Jim. All of you terrorists. That's what you are. You're all terrorists in the eyes of the government. Every one of you, right, left, center, terrorists. Why? Because some people don't agree with what you have to say. They think that you don't have the right to privacy, the right to seize, not be searched and seized at every opportunity. Earlier, 
you were told about the dangers that, of the general wards that the British used before the colonists. That's an important aspect, but what we need to understand is the reaction to that. In 1776, the Virginia Statute uh, incorporated a explicit prohibition against general warrants. This became part of the 14th Amendment. Likewise, Article 14 of the Massachusetts Declaration of Rights, which was written by John Adams, was all in 1780 also became part of the Constitution, as it was in the Massachusetts Constitution, that requires that all searches must be reasonable and serve as a basis for the language of the Fourth, Fourth Amendment. You've heard it over and over again, you've read it, but let me repeat, the rights of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable search and seizure shall not be violated and no warrants will shall issue but upon probable cause supported by an oath of affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized that's in green in the fourth amendment of our constitution in the last century we have seen this eroded over and over and over again. Fear of the other has prompted the desecration of our rights against unreasonable seizure, search and seizure. In 1917, the passage of the Espionage Act, which many people think was to prevent foreigners from spying on Americans, was actually used by the Wilson administration to suppress any dissent of Americans who disagreed with his war policy. Hundreds of innocent Americans lost their privileges. They were seized, searched, seized in many cases. In fact, Russian immigrants in 1918 who had done nothing worse, arbitrarily seized in their person and deported without any probable cause in what was called the Soviet Ark. They were sent back to what was then Soviet Russia, a country they had escaped from unlawfully. The courts found years later that it was unlawful, but that was too late for all those who were deported. Likewise, the pa Espionage Act, which is a precursor to the Patriot Act, was actually used to suppress organized labor the destruction of the IWW, the Industrial Workers of the World, was a target because of their opposition to Wilson's war policies. So eroding again these rights, they raided union halls without warrants often, arresting anybody associated with the IWW, and imprisoned most of the leaders of the IWW. The Palmer raids during the Red Scare of 1918 to 1919 was the seizure again of people without warrants or probable cause based solely on their political beliefs. Stop and think about it. Today, right, left, center here, and we do have a combination of everything from right to far right to far left and everybody in between. When is your belief going to be targeted by the government and you deprived of your personal rights, your property, or seizures. Let us also remember the violation of the Fourth Amendment when it came to the beginning of World War II without probable cause and without lawful warrants the United States seized the persons and property of over 110,000 Japanese Americans, the majority of whom were American citizens, born in this country, loyal to this country, second and third generation Japanese Americans, and turned them in concentration camps under hellish conditions. In 1988, Congress passed and Ronald Reagan actually signed an apology and offered reparations, minor reparations, 
to those who were still alive in 1988. Then, we take a look at the anti-war protest and the feedback. Oh, I didn't like that idea. You may not agree with the right of dissent, but you are here because you're dissenting. The anti-war movement that gave rise during our unjustified war on the people of Vietnam sparked one of the largest anti-war movements in American history. The FBI infiltrated organizations, peaceful anti-war organizations, and all, many times without any warning, seized papers and uh, tried to and arrested, in many cases, those who were protesting against the government. But that brings us to the Bush and Obama administration, in which we have now warrantless seizures and searches under both administrations. Email and internet spying has become the trademark of our government. Forget the propaganda coming out of Washington. We need to thank people like Julian Assad, Bradley Manning, Snowden, for reporting to us what our government is doing and what it's all about. It, the use, in fact, by the government of agents provocateurs, there may even be one or two in here today, but fortunately I don't see anybody yelling tear down the building, so hopefully there aren't. But it's been a tactic used by the government continuously. On September 27, 2010, in opposite, in, because of fear of protest at the Republican nominating convention in Chicago, the FBI <laughs> raided the homes of seven, seven pacifists who were trying to organize peaceful demonstrations against the war policies of George W. Bush. 23 people to this day are still under indictment and, and subpoenaed to appear before grand juries in Chicago and in Minneapolis. Their laptops, all the papers in their house were seized by SWAT teams. Not even just police coming in in uniforms of the warrant. Instead, you get people coming in with submachine guns, kicking down doors, and terrorizing people. Is this what our Fourth Amendment was that not what our Fourth Amendment guaranteed us a right against? Is this not unreasonable? I think it is very unreasonable. Yeah. The, the FBI has maintained that those who were opposed to government policies are allegedly materially supporting our foreign terrorists throughout the Middle East and South America. So, in a way, just it's saying here today that you want the Fourth Amendment protection that you were guaranteed, you are in fact, by some of those in authority, you in fact are terrorists and you in fact are aiding the enemy because you want to protect your rights under the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. The anti-drone movement, which is given, was spoken about earlier, is also those involved in that have been arrested numerous all over the country and their homes and papers seized. They're spying by the government onto their emails and their actually US mail as well. The labor unions in this country, organized labor and unions have been targeted under the Bush administration when they started speaking out against government policy. And again, the government profiteers were infiltrating some of the unions to get anything they could to arrest and shut and harass the organized labor. So who's left? Who is left? Who else? Is anyone safe from the seizure of their person and property in this electronic age and unrestricted government surveillance? We must all be vigilant no matter what your political leanings, no matter what your philosophical differences are, we must stand together to protect our constitutional rights.
Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to finish out our event. Remember, please, everybody stay engaged. Stand up, be educated, and be counted, for we need to make the Constitution meaningful again. I want to thank everybody for coming, but don't take off because we're going to have an open mic. If anybody here thinks that they have something subjective to say or informative to say, you can come up and say it. We're also going to have a little donation bucket going around. If anybody wants to put in donations, you're welcome to it. Don't forget about our table over here. Petitions. Sign up for the fourth. Restore the fourth because this isn't our last event. We're going to keep this going. If anybody wants to join us and sign up, you're welcome. Get involved. Stay engaged. Be educated and be counted. Thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hey, so my name is John. Uh, I work for Mozilla, and um, I wanted to talk today about something. Um, so for those of you who have seen the documents that Edward Snowden leaked, uh, you may have noticed there was one page, it was a slide on an internal presentation, the NSA, and it listed the names of the companies that participated in the prison program. And as it happens, Google is on there, Facebook is on there, Skype is on there, Yahoo is on there. Mozilla happens not to be on there, and I'm not here to say, okay, this is great for our company, support my company. There's a reason we're not on that list, and the reason is that we have nothing to give them, right? We collect, uh, we sync between different browsers, for example, your, your browser history, uh, your bookmarks, and so on and so forth, but we encrypt that information so that no one in between one browser and the other browser can ever get that information, and that's what I'm here to talk about today is that we can encrypt our information so that the only person who can uh, read what you wrote is the intended party and that nobody in between can read your message. Not, not New York State, not the NSA. If the NSA wants to read your message and it's encrypted, they can get a search warrant to do it. And some of you might have seen me passing around flyers today. I have, uh, I have some here to show you, but we can all set up encryption, right? The problem with encryption is that it's not a one-player game. We need many people to participate so that we can have secure private phone calls, private text messages between each other. And um, I have some flyers here today explaining how you can do that. I am not affiliated with the group that has created uh, these apps that I'm promoting. I, they're free and they're open source, so they don't benefit from it, and I certainly don't benefit from it. But I really, really encourage everyone here today to take security into your own hands, take privacy into your own hands, install these encrypted systems so that you can have private conversations with people. So, who here has an Android phone? Okay, great, so you can all do this today. These are apps for Android that will encrypt your conversations, encrypt your communications, and it's incredibly easy to set up. It might take two to three minutes. So, uh, if you're interested, please see me. I'm handing out flyers, and uh, thanks for having me. Bye. Anybody else want to come up? Thank you for being here to defend the fourth. I just wanted to make you guys aware of a video on We Are Many, where Glenn Greenwald, the reporter who broke the story of Snowden, um, actually talks to a conference about that story. I think you guys would all be really, really interested in it. You can go to We Are Many. If you just Google We Are Many, Glenn Greenwald, WeAreMany.org, Glenn Greenwald, you'll find the video. Thank you.